Welcome to the 2020 NRSL Digital Storm Cup Series Season Preview video. As you're seeing, this is the primary paint scheme for reigning two-time champion Johnny Gardner coming into his fourth season in the series. He has the arguably best resume of anyone in the field, but we'll get to that resume near the end of this review first. We're going to talk about three drivers returning for the first time since the 2017 season. I remember I forgot to write someone down and it, it was it was myself. All right. So we'll start off with Joshua Sikuli 2017 season. No victories, two top fives, six top tens. He ended up finishing 37th in the point standings. He was driving the 31 for Richard Childress Racing back then. So Sekouli is making a return to the Cup Series here in 2020. It'll be interesting to see how he does filling in the shoes of retired Joe Gibbs Racing driver Charles Jackson. Another driver returning from 2017 is LJ Toledo. Toledo drove the number 78 Toyota for Furniture Row Racing back in 2017. Toledo ended up 35th in the points with three top fives and 11 top tens. For so many top tens, it's a shocker he was so far down in the points. But the average finishing position of 23rd shows that a lot of DNFs likely plagued Toledo's otherwise productive season. But he returns. He's driving the number six here. In the Cup Series, he's driving the 52 in trucks, and we look forward to seeing how Toledo does in the series. Grabbing a big ride was Tyler Markle. He's making his first run since 2017, where he ran for Bulldog Motorsports in the number 9 Dodge. He was actually 38th in points, lowest of these three drivers. Two top fives, but he did have eight top tens in three pole positions, so... Watch out for Tyler on the qualifying list. We might see him up at the top of the board often in the year. So now that brings me to the three drivers returning from 2018. And that starts with myself, Zach Rogers. I did not drive full-time in Cup in 2019. I was 20th in points in 2017 with a win, but 34th in points in 2018. More top fives, more top tens, but not a good season plagued by those DNFs. That takes us to the next driver in the 90s, the 99 that will be driven by Alexander Rowe, a new face for Roush Fenway Racing. Now Rowe finished 21st in points in 2018 and 15th in 2017. He's got a win in both seasons. His, produ his production was down in 2018. But otherwise, he was still a consistent contender. His average finishing and average starting position for both seasons is 22nd. And now that gets us to the man that is to be feared. He had the best season in recent memory back in 2018. 8 wins, 12 top 5, 17 top 10s, and 3 poles. Average finish of 16th, average start of 18th. But he only got 6th in points. He was plagued by the round of 8. The round you don't want to have a bad bad run in. And Rich missed out on the final 4. Which is honestly pretty depressing. When you consider Rich went out and won the race at Homestead. If he was in the final 4. He would have been the 2018 champion. But you cannot live your life on what ifs. But Rich is definitely a man to be feared at the intermediates. And we'll see if he can top that 8-win season that came out of nowhere. In 2017, he was 29th in points with just 2 top 5s and 8 top 10s. So, huge improvement for him in 2018. Um, hopefully, he'll be battling back from the injury. He'll be running in the truck series as well. So, now with that, let's get you to your returning drivers from the 2019 season starting with Quentin Moore. Moore will be driving in the 89 for Evans Gardner Motorsports, the team home to champ Johnny Gardner. 
Moore won a race in his rookie year in 2018, where he ended up 26th in the points. But last year was a down year. 40th in the standings for Quinton Moore. Not what he needed at all. He wasn't last, but he sure as heck wasn't far from it either. So Quinton definitely looking to pick things back up to his rookie season, where he had a win, five top fives and eight top tens, versus the one top five and three top tens he had last year. That takes us to fourth year driver Dylan Young out of Team Penske. Has had no wins in all of his seasons. And last year was definitely a down year. 2018, he improved from 24th in the points to 17th. From 2017, of course. So 2017, he was 24th. 2018, he was 17th. But last year, he went down hard. 38th in the points for Dylan Young. And Dylan looking to bounce back in what will be his fourth season in the two car. Of course, Dylan with a partnership t stake in the team. But how much longer will Dylan drive a car he can't put in victory lane? No longer the face of the one car. James Shelley moves to the 71. The team has remained the same, but the team has completely changed their numbers. No longer are they the 1, 8, and 42. But now the 71, 72, and 73. But James Shelley piloting the 71 car in what will be his fourth season in the cup series 2017 still his highlight year fifth in the points 2018 production went down no wins 23rd last year he was 37 that was his worst season yet as well just one top five and three top tens even dylan young who finished below him had seven top tens but shelley had a really off year he didn't even have a pole in 2019 past two years before that two poles each Shelly's going to be a man to look for to see if he finally has that resurgence he's been looking for we head to second year coming driver William Flickinger who will stay in the number 77 ride but the team has switched from Toyota to Ford William will drive the 77 in his second full-time season last year he ended 30th in the points two top fives three top tens and two poles his teammate, Adam, is uh, fresh from the truck series last year. Um, Adam will drive the 78. So that gets us off page one of the returning drivers. And for the third year in, the row, in a row, Samet Oskin will pilot the 22 for Team Penske. He's been a free agent after every year. And Oskin has managed to get the 22 ride once again. He was 21st in points 2017, 32nd in 2018, and a backup a bit to 29th last year. But he has just that one road course victory in 2017 at Sebring. But the production definitely went down last year. Eight top tens in his first two seasons, just three in 2019. Another rookie driver who had moments of success in 2019 was Sebastian Kukulon, who leaves... Bulldog Motorsports for the new 29 car out of Richard Childress Racing. Kugelon finished 25th in the point standings. Now, I believe this is flip-flopped, if I'm remembering correctly. I forget if I flip-flopped this or not. I'm forgetting because I forget things. But I believe Kukulon was 25th in points. He got the win, three top fives, five top tens. And. Actually, no, I think he made the playoffs. Yes, Kukulon, Kukulon made the playoffs. The thing I did was, is in my notes. I have one line of positions, and then I have the parentheses. And in trucks, the parentheses was where they finished in overall, and this one is flipped. So Kukulon finished 12th in playoff standings, but 25th overall with that win. But Kukulon did make the playoffs as a rookie, and uh, we'll see how he does in his second season. Another rookie driver from last year, Rob Evans, now driving the 65 for Evans Gardner Motorsports once again. Rob won at Dega, the cutoff race, ninth in the points for that, 22nd in overall accumulation with the one win, three top fives, and five top tens. 
We'll see if Evans continues his super speedway success and if he'll be the first to get to two points paying super speedway victories. That takes us just one spot up, one click up to the 64 Subaru driven by Ace Rogers entering his second season as well. Ace had three top fives and seven top tens, 23rd in the point standings. We'll see if Ace is able to get anything done as they switch from Dodge to Subaru. Disappointing season for Seth Cole in the 72 machine, just 22nd in the point standings. In his third season of competition, he's gone from three wins in 2017 to two wins in 2018 to just one in 2019. And what a bad season it was for Seth Cole. 2017, 30th in points, but he had 10 top 10s. 2018, two wins with 12 top 10s, fourth in the standings. But last year, just one win and three top fives to show for it. Take a little drink there. As this is a rebound year for Seth Cole here. Is he going to sink back down into the trenches of 30th in the points? Or will he once again be a Final Four contender? Returning to the 18 Toyota, Joe Gibbs Racing is Jose Mills. Jose finished the playoffs 7th in the grid with 1 win, 3 top 5, 7 top 10s. 18th in overall accumulation. So we'll see how Jose does here in his second season. Running out of things to say, guys. You know, it's tough doing these previews. Jessica Shelton entering her third season. 20th in the standings. She improved from 2018. 2018, she was 35th in the standings. Shelton almost won the Daytona 500. Um, but fuel mishaps cost her. But up on the top five count, two in 2018 to five in 2019. And then top tens went from six to seven. Average finish has improved from 24th to 21st. Entering his third season and second in the 48 is Alex Ferranti, who was 19th in the point standings. Ferranti also improved his average finish from 23rd to 21st. Top 10 count stays the same. Two more inside the top five. He was 33rd in 2018. So Ferranti looking to continue that improvement there. We get to his new teammate, Kev Shearer, in the 24 for Hendrick. Shearer uh, leaving uh, Roush Fenway, which had a one-season run with the BMWs. Shearer got his one career win at Pens Pensacola. Shearer was 22nd in points with uh, Evans Gardner Motorsports in 2018 for his rookie debut. But despite getting the win, top 10 counts were down. But of course, we had 12 less races. But Shearer undoubtedly better in the points, 8th in the playoff grid. And then a breakout year for Team Audi, especially Nate Rogers. Nate was 12th in points in 2017 with a win. But in 2018, he went winless and finished 37th last year. Back up to 5th in the point standings. 11th overall in accumulation with 2 wins, 6 top 5s, and 8 top 10s. It's his best season to date. Average finish of 20th. And he can only go up from here. Free agent rookie Ryan Brommer. Arguably rookie of the year, if my uh, statistics are correct. Brommer got 10th in points. He went back-to-back -back wins early in the year at road courses. Brommer goes from Wood Brothers to the newly reformed Stuart Haas Racing, who has uh, lost champion Caleb Hoffman, 2017 champ Caleb Hoffman at that. <clears throat> Throat's getting real dry, guys. And Brommer and others are joining this team as now they are a Chevy team, not a four team. And that sentence went off track real quick. <laughs> uh, Brommer got two wins, six top fives, and eight top tens with a pole average finish of 20th. Another fourth year driver, Charles Sanford. Got a win in 2017, win in 2018, nothing in 2019, but still 15th in the point standings. And his average finish improved 
from 24th in 2018 to 19th in 2019. He was 16th in points in 2017, 38th in 2018. So definitely an improvement bounce back from the sophomore slump for Charles Sanford. 33 of Alex Gray, arguably one of the most consistent drivers on the year. 7th in accumulation, 13th overall as he missed the playoffs. It was Gray's first year without a victory, but he still had 8 top 10s with his best average finish of his career on the season at 18th. Gray finished 11th in 2017 and 9th in 2018, making the playoffs both years. So 2019 was a first, no wins, no playoff appearance. We expect to see Gray rebound and make the playoffs with a win or two in 2020. That takes us to another EGM driver, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. In the 59, new colors for Fitzwater. Him and James Shelley was uh, the same sponsorship, but their paint schemes are a little different, so we'll be able to make out who's who. Fitzwater was 31st in points in 2017. 2018 was his breakout year with two wins, but he was not in the playoffs, so he ended up 18th in points. Last year, he made it with a win, and Fitzwater ended up 11th on the grid with a terrible playoff run. Second year in the three car for Cole Deaver. Paint scheme's not changing. We shouldn't expect anything else to change. Three wins in his rookie year had him second in the points. Two wins this past year had him third in the points, so... Only other driver to make the final four every season along with two-time defending champ Johnny Gardner. So we'll see if Deaver goes three years in a row of making the final four. His average finish and starting position did increase from his rookie year. So while he was one down on the wins, his top 10 count was still there and he had three pole positions versus zero from 2018. So we're expecting great things from Cole Deaver in 2020. Same goes for Nico Tringali, who had a breakout year, 32nd in points 2017, 39th 2018, but 4th and made the Final Four in 2019 with 3 wins, 7 top 5s, 11 top 10s. It was a breakout year for Nico. His average finish spiked from 25th in 2018 to 17th in 2019. And Tringali is expected to be a contender once again returning to hendrick for the third year in a row is jonathan zorlin in the five machine no less second in the points another three win season for zorlin most top tens on a season in his career despite the 12 race cut in the schedule three wins six top fives and 12 top tens in the 2019 season versus three wins five top fives nine top tens in the 2018 season and the average finish up from 20th to 16th as well as the starting position for that matter ninth in 2017 points third in 2018 points second last year can he get the title here in 2020 and finally we go to our champion reigning champion two-time champion johnny gardner as i'm going to take another drink of my gatorade here So I'm just sucking down air and oh boy. So let's look at Johnny Gardner's portfolio. 2017 was the lone year as a four team. Or no, actually it was the first of two years as a four team. Three wins, seven top fives, 11 top tens. 19th average finish, 18th average start, second points to a man who didn't win a single race. 2018, three wins, 10 top fives, 16 top tens, 16th average finish, 18th average start, champion. And then last year, two wins, six top fives, 13 top tens, a pole, finishes up the 15th, starting position up the 12th, champion again. So can Johnny Gardner make it a three-peat? Can he go three titles in a row? We'll find out. We sure will. Here's the total count for the year. 14 rookies, 9 drivers in their second year, third in their in, no, seven, 7 drivers in their third year, with 11 in the fourth year. Drivers not returning include Edwin Mendez, Andrew Miller, John Arndt, Charles Jackson, Peter Sands, Caleb Hoffman, Jay Jefferson, 
Austin Alves, DJ Curtis, Patrick Sick, TJ Hanley, Mark Riggleman, James Qualls, William Brock, Gatlin Downey, Marty Johnson, Tony Green, Phil Parker, Sack Flickinger, and Levi McIntyre. New faces include Corey Williams, Austin Colano, Priya McShane, Jesse Turner, Peter Onjak, Jeff Toledo, Wes McCoy, Casey Nanako, Keith Rich, Carter Friesen, Logan York, Tyler Fink, Matthew Logan, and Adam Flickinger. As we have interviews to get to, so I didn't bother going through them all. So first, before we get to our interviews, let's look at my 2020 Digital Storm Cup Series predictions. The playoffs are back to 16 drivers in total. And of course, the three rounds of three races, down to 12, 8, and then to the final four. Prediction number one. Rookie drivers win at least seven races in 2020. In the past, 2018, we had eight rookie wins in 37 races, and then six in 25 last year. Veterans are getting better every year, and the rookies can only do so much, but I expect seven wins in 2020 from rookie drivers. The playoff 16 will have at least three rookies and at least one driver who does not win in the regular season. Consistency is huge, especially when all the veterans start winning a lot of races. It's uh, bound to happen here in 2020. Slump prediction goes to your defending champion, Johnny Gardner. I just don't see how he can keep up the success, especially with Andrew Rich returning. Anything is considered a slump after you win two titles in a row. Will Gardner even make the final four? I don't think so, but he will be there in the Elite Eight for sure. Resurgence, James Shelley. It's now or never, man. Shelley won two races in 2017, was fifth in points, expected to be a contender in 2018. He wasn't, and he was even worse in 2019. So it's only so far down Shelley can go, and 37th in points is pretty low. Rookie of the Year prediction is Keith Rich. He's entering his fourth year in the Truck Series, and I expect him to do well in his rookie year in the Cup Series. In the Dark Horse, the surprise to me is going to be Alexander Rowe. I don't think people expect a lot of him. He wasn't in Cup last year, but he's won one race in both seasons, and he may surprise a lot of people if he makes the playoffs. And then finally, my final four prediction the Chevy of Jonathan Zorlin, he'll be there again. The Chevy Camaro of Seth Cole, by the way, Seth Cole's three-car team, the 71, 72, 73 there in Camaros. Johnny's four-car team of the 59, 65, 89, and 98 are in Malibus. Any other Chevy you see is an SS. So Zorlin's still in an SS. Seth Cole's in a Camaro. So those two guys, they're going to make the final four. Nico Tringali out of Team Audi. He will be in the Final Four once again. And then returning from his injured year, Andrew Rich of a Subaru team will make the Final Four. So that's right. I don't have Johnny Gardner in my Final Four. We'll discuss it with him. We interviewed him last year. We're going to do it again this year. So we're going to take a little break. And we'll be back with interviews here on the 2020 NRSL Digital Storm Cup Series Preview Show. All right, we are back here on the 2020 NRSL Digital Storm Cup Series preview show, and I am joined by now two-time Cup Series champion, Johnny Gardner. Thank you for joining me, sir. No problem. Glad to be here. All right, Johnny. How how are you going to how are you going to surpass this this last season here? Another championship. Um the top 10 count was progressing upwards again. And I, I don't know how how are you gonna how are you gonna pick this up, man? The schedule's back up to 37 races. Are we looking at maybe a record 20 top 10 season, perhaps? All the stats don't lie. I'm consistently impressed. The first season I was doing well. Second season we're back to normal. Now with the rebuild, with adding the addition to the Malibu for the stable, I see that we're gonna do something that nobody has ever seen. Yet, I have a feeling that this could be my strongest season and possibly become a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back if things go align. 
and let, let's talk about that decision. So uh, previously, the past three seasons, we've only seen the Chevy SS model used. Um, your team was originally a Ford Fusion team for two seasons, and then you switched to the SS last year. And now we're seeing with uh, Audi came in a few years ago. Um, BMW had a brief one season stint with Roush last year. Um, Miss Roush has gone back to Ford. And now we're seeing um, Subaru has come in with my team, Bulldog Motorsports. And um, not only have you guys switched to the Malibus, but Seth Cole Ganassi's team um, has switched to the Camaro. So can you tell me, like, why? What What's the. Uh, reason Chevy is pushing these different models into the series. The way I see it is this. Um I was talking with Rob when we um decided to go back when we started to go with the Chevrolet for the new for the twenty twenty. We were we were both thinking of what we wanted to do and his idea was bring out the Malibu and I was like, Malibu, this seems like an interesting idea. We could try it. See how we do. And with Seth bringing in the Camaro, that's like progressing towards the future if we do end up pushing out the Chevy SS a little bit. Right, and of course, uh, the team now, you've had to shrink to a four-car stable uh, per league rules. Uh, were you upset at all about giving up the 38? I wasn't upset at all. I knew the performance for the 38 wasn't there. I was like, you know, let's just, you know, it's only a one-time thing for the 38. Let's just, after the season, let's just ditch the 38. Let's get rid of it. Bring it back to the front row motorsports table. Just push it out of my sight. Let's okay. just focus on what we have now with the four cars and see how they can progressively improve. And front row definitely looking to build for the future with two sign-on rookies over there. Tyler Fink in the 34 and... Matthew Logan in the 38, but back to uh, EGM. So 2019, you guys had five cars, four wins, two from yourself, one from Fitzwater, and one from Evans. You guys totaled 15 top fives and 31 top tens with just two pulls between the drivers. And that was in 25 races. Now, if you take away uh, the 38, you're only losing two top tens. So what, what's the expectation for the team now that the season has re-expanded from 25 to 37 races? Is it maybe uh, 50 top 10s between the four of you guys for 2020? Realistically, I don't see it that high. I would say anywhere between like 40 to 45. There are some tracks on the schedule that we don't have the set expectations because we know Fitzy has his road course abilities. Quinton's good on the short tracks while I'm freaking dominant on speedways i pulled rob i told rob after his win i'm like you know we got to work on your super speedway program because you are one of our secret weapons when it comes to plate racing i'm like the one that likes to like be smart ride and be conservative and i like to finish it but not towards not to the point where the cars brought home damaged or wrecked Let's talk about one of your other drivers, Quinton Moore. He got the lone win in his rookie season back in 2018 at Martinsville, 26th in the points in 2018. But last year was a down year for Quinton, uh, 40th in the points out of 42 cars. How can Quinton get back to the form he had in his rookie season in his uh, third year in the Cup Series in 2020? But just like I told, like we, like Rob and I, we both, we all sat down. We had a team meeting. We all said that we got to work on what we had originally in 2018, like when Quentin was a rookie. We had to reevaluate and relook at the schedule. We knew Martinsville was Quentin's strong suit when he got his win as a rookie. We had to basically figure out what we need to do to improve that car. The, I was like to, to, to Rob, I was like, the performance wasn't there for Quentin. We need to establish something that we can improve on to make sure that car is back to what it was as a rookie. Right. And the expectation for Fitzwater, more or less uh, the same fifth and fifth in the uh, 11th in the playoffs, rather fifth in overall uh, points accumulation last year with the one win, five top fives, a top 10. So uh, 
curiously enough, though he was down one win from 2018, it was his best season statistically considering there were 12 less races on the schedule. He had one more top five from 2018 and the same amount of top 10. So what would you say Fitzwater's expectation is for his uh, fourth season in the Cup Series now that he's been going up every year? You can see Fitzy getting a couple of wins here or there, possibly more top fives and top tens, but with the consistency of like finishing towards the bottom of the playoffs, I could potentially see him getting into possibly breaking into like the t- top five, maybe if the consistency continues to improve. All right, Johnny. Well, thank you for your time. Just once again, going to go over the predictions from earlier the predictions this year include rookies winning at least seven races in the season uh the playoff 16 will have at least three rookies if one driver without any regular season wins uh the prediction for the slump is yourself johnny gardner going from two championships to outside the final four resurgence for james shelley rookie of the year for keith rich and a dark horse surprise out of returning driver alexander rowe and once again, the final four prediction, Andrew Rich, Jonathan Zorlin, Seth Cole, and Nico Tringali. Um, again, thank you for your time, Johnny. And we should hopefully have one or two more interviews for this preview show. All right, we are back on the 2020 NRSL Digital Storm Cup Series preview show. Three years of the Mountain Dew brand being on and now two computers, Digital Storm. And we moved the food brand to the truck series. But anyway, I'm joined by Dylan Young, the president of the NRSL. And we're here to talk about Dylan Young's, uh, what's the right word for it? Ah, yes, pathetic 2019 campaign. Thanks for joining me, Dylan. Uh, Good for roasting me, but thank you for having me here, though. Dylan, let's just get to the team stats first off. It was yourself in the two, Peter Sands in the 12, and Samet Oskin. Uh, in the 22 so second year in the row the team had the same lineup Uh, one win from sands five top fives and 13 top tens between the three of you guys with two poles sands finished 39th in the points yourself was 38th and cement was 29th so uh let's just talk about your frustrations as team owner on how this past season went yeah as a whole it was a bit rough uh you know things weren't coming our way um i mean cement was bob's in 22 like you mentioned so it was brand new to us for there but at the same time you know me and sands we've we've been doing this for a while but just things were were looking pretty good at first so uh hopefully we get that rust out of the way and we can work on getting our um getting our act together so we'll see what will happen Perhaps the newfound partnership with the Wood Brothers could help that out as uh, the 12 car, I believe, is gone now. And you have the 21 on board instead. Uh, Ryan Brommer not in the car anymore, but a another rookie out of Austin Colano. And then Austin, of course, returning to the 22. What's the mindset for 2020? Uh, don't repeat 2019, but uh, in a serious way, I think it's just a matter of uh, when we go out there, once the moment we take the green flag and the moment the checker flag comes on by, uh, we're going to race our hardest 110% and go out there and try to win those races. So I don't know what really to expect a whole lot, except for the fact that uh, we we definitely don't want to repeat 2019 again. Yeah, only so far down you can go. You had a great year in 2018, 17th in the points, best of... Uh, the drivers that did not make the playoff so 2019 definitely not the year you guys were expecting a lot of top tens but the dnfs just crept up on you guys uh is there anything anything you can do to not crash out as much uh hopefully we tried our best to get a void around the wrecks because you know at times it's a hit or miss you have to know how to avoid the wrecks as best as possible you have to know how to you know avoid yourself in the best possible manner and the fact that you know, when someone's wrecking, you got to know whether to go high or low, and hopefully no one plows Indy at the last second. So, uh, fingers crossed on what will happen there, but uh, hopefully we, we fix that there because it really didn't do a good job at that at all. So, again, fingers crossed. <laughs> and a return of a, of a few sponsors from 2018 where you guys did very good. Um, 
on board for you this year. You've got Auto Trader, Freightliner, Alliance Truck Parts, Detroit Genuine Parts, uh, Fitzgerald is staying with you. You got a uh, SKF coming on board. Hooters has returned, and now you got uh, Miller Lite. Is the uh, in increase in sponsorship going to help you and uh, the team as a whole? I would definitely say so. I think it's the fact that you know with the increase in sponsorship, it really helps out with the funding, and definitely the fact that you know Hooters has been a lifelong sponsor with us, and appreciate for every every bit of work that they've done throughout the years, and you know all the other sponsors they've came along with. It's just it's been one hell of a journey, and I hope I continue to you know, help these sponsors out one little bit at a time there. So we'll see what will happen. All right, Dylan. Well, the best of luck to you in the 2020 campaign. Still looking for that first career victory yourself. And just to rehash the predictions one more time for Dylan, rookies win at least seven races in the year. Playoff 16 will have at least three rookies. One driver out of the 16 will have no regular season wins. The slump prediction is two-time back-to-back champ Johnny Gardner, resurgence for James Shelley, rookie of the year out of Keith Rich, and a surprise dark horse out of Alexander Rowe, running for the first time since 2018. And of course, the final four prediction of returning driver Andrew Rich, Jonathan Zorlin, Seth Cole, and Nico Tringali. So Dylan, thank you for your time. And... Uh, I am either ending this video or having another interview um, if the, the, the time sl timetable of this video timetable hmm. if the time mark timestamp is about to run out then this video is over if not there is another interview coming thank you so much for having me there yep and we are back for our last interview for the 2020 NRSL Digital Storm Cup Series season. And we're joined with NRSL Vice President Charles Sanford. How are you doing today, Charles? Doing well. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, Charles. So we're looking at your season last year. Four top fives, eight top tens, and an average finish of 19th. You got 15th in the point standings. Um, definitely better than 2018 where you were 38. So tell us what was your mindset after a terrible 2018 going into 2019? Well, looking at last season, we were just, it was more just, uh, the idea that looked to improve, uh, obviously it wasn't much farther down we could have gone. Um, so it was definitely a little bit more about having some fun, uh, try and get improvement from where we were a season ago. And obviously, we we're able to. Um, still not entirely content. I mean, you're never going to be content with just 15th. Uh, so we would like to be able to improve on the top fives for next season. Uh, be up there a little bit more often and just be more of a threat. And perhaps get back in victory lane 2017, win at Watkins Glen 2018, win at Texas. Nothing in 2019. Is it was it, it was a better season overall for you, but no victory lane. Uh, I mean, you're not going to be able to win every season. Uh, obviously, for the sponsors, we try and put them into victory lane as many times as we can. So it was kind of upsetting to not be in victory lane. Um, but as long as we try and do our best, uh, sometimes you get beat. So In 2018, your team, S3 Motorsports, expanded to a two-car operation, bringing aboard uh, Jessica Shelton. She finished 35th in points that year, so 2018 was overall a down year. Um, but she improved uh, greatly in 2019, 20th in the point standings, five top five, seven top tens, um, and a second place finish in the Daytona 500. Um, how's the progression with the O2 team going on the team side? Well, anytime you add a new car, there's always going to be some growing pains because then you're spreading your resources thinner than where you were before. Um, so... Each year we're getting better because we've got more cars built. Um, we're usually pretty good at being able to try and keep them in one piece. So uh, just a matter of building new chassis, make sure they're always up to date, and just trying to keep improving from where we are to just keep making solid steps forward. On the truck side of things, your younger brother Henry did very well. Uh, two wins in the 13 races he ran. Uh, now that Henry doesn't have to worry about you sharing a truck ride with him, what's Henry's goal for 2020 in the truck series? Even though this is the cup preview show, uh, we didn't do any interviews for trucks. So uh, what, what's Henry's goal in uh, 2020 in the truck series? 
Uh, pretty simple. Um, with having been into victory lane now, really wants to kind of build on that, be a title contender. Uh, um, basically, that's about it. Just if he can put together some solid, uh, solid campaign, I think he'll be happy. And uh, now you'll be sharing a different truck with a uh, younger sister, Jean Sanfer, um, and and you'll be in a mentor role for her. So is the plan similar to when you were sharing the ride with Henry, or is it maybe a little different now that the season has uh, expanded back to a larger schedule from 15 races to 27? I think we'll probably have about the same idea. Um, it's just a matter of with getting Jean in the seat, trying to, show her the ropes a little bit, uh, get her into the minds of what it takes to be a truck driver there and uh, contend on a weekly basis. So just pretty much going to be the same thing. All right. Well, thank you. That was Charles Sanford here on the 2020 NRSL, the Joe Storm Cup Series preview show. And that will do it. Three interviews with three different drivers of different calibers, and we'll see how all of them do in the 2020 season. Bulldog Speed signing off.